Hi, I'm Jeannie Summerlajero. And I'm Rebecca Camp Brent. And today we're going to talk about creating lacy designs for applique using doodling. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how to create those doodles, and then Rebecca's going to show you how to create the lacy designs. The first thing I'm going to do is use a template. Now, I'm not going to show you how to create this, but we will give you instructions on the website for how to create these templates. And I want you to think of this like a snowflake. So when you make paper snowflakes, you fold your square paper, and you end up with a wedge. Now, what I've done is drawn that wedge here on the paper, and now I'm going to doodle within that wedge. Now, the outside line right here, imagine that that would, if you copied this all the way around, create a circle. I'm going to decide what do I want to draw in here to create a lacier outside design. Now, typically, I would start using a pencil because I like to make corrections. But so you can see it on camera, I'm going to use a pen. And I'm just going to come in here and draw a line and come up. OK, so that's interesting. I might decide now, what holes do I want to cut out of my design? So I'm basically thinking of cutting holes out of the design. So here, I might say, OK, we could take that right there. And then we can come in here and create some designs like that. And then we can create some designs like that. So you can see I'm basically deciding what I'm going to cut out. And it doesn't need to hit the edge. That's the important thing. We're actually going to be cutting these designs out with an electronic cutting machine. So you don't need to worry about how you are going to cut it out. We're going to let the machine cut it out. So as I come along here, um, because we're going to be using an electronic cutting machine, it's going to be able to see these designs better if I color the whole thing in. But that takes a little bit of time. So I'm going to hand this off to Rebecca um, once I fill this in, just so you can see. I've got a whole sheet here. And this is the design that we're going to use on the computer. Now, Rebecca's got some Kaleidoscope software, and she's going to show you what to do with that. Yeah, just so you can have a little preview, um, I've opened my software and I have a wedge shape here in the background. You actually can choose a lot of different shapes. So we could choose a different, um, a different shape for the kaleidoscope if we wanted to. And this is if we wanted to have our kaleidoscope take on a different shape, but we're just going to use the simple wedge that Jeannie showed you to begin with. So we have that one already selected, and then that gives me this template here in the background. And I want to open my file. We have it already into the computer as an electronic file, and, and you can we see did that was scanning. We scanned it in. So we have the outlines, the shapes, and if you look over on the right edge of your screen, you can see that we get a preview. And as I move this design, the doodle, around, that preview is going to change quite a bit. But since Jeannie did a lot of planning as she was working on this, I just want to fit this wedge as closely as I can to the template on my screen. So we'll just play with the shape a little bit. I could rotate it if I need to, but I don't think I will. And now we have pretty close to our finished design here, and I like that. So I think what we'll do next is we'll color that one in and go ahead and use it. And we've already done that, so. So sort of through the magic of television, <laughs> I'm going to pick a different shape. This is actually the same design, but it's been colored in. And all I need to do now is just the same little bit of resizing, repositioning. If you notice in the preview, if you have the sizing off a little bit, sometimes you get lines across the preview. And to get rid of those, you just make your wedge a little bit bigger until those outlines disappear. Because all, you'll, all you will see, all that the scanner and the cutting machine will see is what we're seeing here in the preview. So let's get that up close. Isn't so that that's, terrific? That's I like that. That's what we're going to be cutting out of fabric. So we'll take that design, and I'm going to send it off to the printer, our theoretical printer today. That's right. And what we're going to do <laughs> is print this out on a letter-sized piece of paper as just a plain black and white 
uh, right. image, right. and that'll be ready to go back to Jeannie. And here you go. So now this is the design that we're going to be cutting out of fabric. Now I have an, elect an electronic cutting machine here that has a scanner in it. Um, so I'm going to put this on the scanning and cutting mat. You can see it's not exactly perfect there. And I'm going to move that out of the way. We're going to load it into the machine. And then we're going to scan. So I'm going to choose scan and then scan to cut data. And what that means, it's going to scan it and then store that in the machine so we can do a little bit of editing. And the reason we might want to edit it, we can make it bigger, we can rotate it, we can do a whole bunch of things to it. So I've got the design here. I'm going to create my cut file. I need to do a little bit of editing here. I'm basically cropping out the lines that it picked up from the edges of the paper. I'm going to save that. I'm going to put this back here. And I'm going to save that to the cutting machine. All right, so now it's there. Now I'm going to cut out the fabric. So what this is, is a sheet of fusible. And what I've done is, because I know I'm going to be appliquing this shape um, and using fusible to do that, I apply the fusible to the fabric before I actually cut it out. So I apply the fusible, remove the paper of the fusible, and then put it down onto the cutting mat. When I'm cutting really intricate designs, I tend to use a heavier, uh, heavier fusible for that. I get a much cleaner cut for very intricate designs. And so I've got a fairly heavy fusible here. When you do that, once you stitch over it, you're going to want to use a titanium needle so that it doesn't gum up the needle. OK, I've got that here. All right, it is saved, and we're going to go to, oops, back to home, and load it up. So we're going to go to Pattern, Save Data, back to the machine, and scroll down to where we have that design. And now, to do the pillow that we have here, um, this was actually a 10-inch design, but you can't print 10 inches um, on a typical 8.5 by 11 printer. So we only scanned in an 8 inch design. So I actually want to make that bigger. To do that, we're going to go here. OK, and then we're going to resize up to 10 inches. OK. I'm going to put this in. I'm going to load it up. Do you have to have a special blade in the cutter for this, Jean? Um, not a special blade per se. I would use this, but if I was going to use this cutter for both um, cutting out fabric and cutting paper, I might have a different blade for paper so that I'm not mixing up the two blades because the paper will dull the blade faster than it would for fabric. OK, I'm going to hit cut, and it's going to go. So I'm going to let that just cut for a little bit. It's working on the outside first. And it'll probably take about, I don't know, three minutes, three to five minutes to cut this out. So instead of actually waiting for that, I've already got one sheet that's cut here. And once it's cut, you basically just peel back the fabric. You can see here it's got a nice cut. This is just cutting out the, bringing off the outside here. OK, so that's the easy cut. And then you have to be kind of careful when you're taking up points, especially. Start with the point. And I just use my nails usually. But there is a little lifter here that you can use as well if you're worried about things. That'll help you get it off too. 
And you can see we've got some very intricate designs. Now when I get to this, there's another point here I know from my design. I'll just take this, that's, I'm going to just take that out of there. So you can see that I have to be a little careful here, especially when you've got some really narrow cutting areas. You don't want to pull really hard. You're working with fabric. You don't want to rip it. Um, so instead of you watching me pull all this off, I've already done that. And this is the design that we've got. So you can tell, obviously, fabric. <laughs> and then it's got the fusible on the back. So you can just fuse this onto fabric. Now, one other thing that I've done is I've cut this out of freezer paper. So now there's a whole bunch of things you could do with this. One, you could take this and use it as a template, if you're crazy like me. <laughs> and you could take all those little pieces that you just took out and if this was on fabric, I could use it as a template to get a reverse image of the cutout that I just did. You could also um, use an iron and put this down on fabric and use it as a template so then you could, or a stencil. So then you could paint or do whatever and get some really interesting designs that way. But today we are working with this. And I'm going to pass it on to Rebecca. And she's going to show you how to do some free motion quilting on it. OK, so um, I have taken the design and I have actually fused it in place at the center of my fabric. This is going to be for the front of our pillow, which would you oh, hand me that, yes, Jeannie? Of course. This is the pillow all finished up and I'm going to layer myself a sandwich here. Those of you who have quilted before know that this isn't the kind of sandwich you eat, although there is lots of fiber. <laughs> we have a backing fabric and a piece of batting and then our top fabric. And ordinarily, I would pin or baste this, but since this is a relatively small piece, I'm just going to let it go. Um, I'll just work on it free today. There are several different ways that you can approach attaching an applique. The traditional applique method would be to use a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine and actually catch down all of these raw fabric edges. But with a design this intricate, you find out that that's not really a very practical solution. So what I've done instead is design around this in a literal sense. I'm going to use free motion work, and I have three different examples here. The pillow that I showed you, we actually have done some stitching, just straight stitching, free motion, with a matching thread on top of the applique design. And then I designed a sort of frame. And the way I did that was to go back to the printout that Jeannie had originally done. So I have this design working on just a quarter of it. And then I just took my pencil and doodled around it. Then I also have an example here where I just ignored the design as I did my free motion work. So it's a feather design and it just covers the entire area of the, the work. The third example that I have here in the middle is for those of you who would rather not do any free motion work. This one is actually done with a decorative stitch on the sewing machine that's called a serpentine stitch. It's just sewn in a regular grid the lines are about three quarters of an inch apart, but I love using a serpentine stitch because it's a little bit irregular, and so nobody is ever going to notice if your lines aren't perfectly spaced. But now let's try a little bit of free motion work on this. I have my machine set up with a darning or free motion foot. This is my preferred way of free motioning on this project because I don't have to follow the shape exactly. Now let's start. The first thing, the hardest thing to remember sometimes with free motion, because you're not using the feed dogs, you do need to lower your presser foot. I have my machine set for a medium speed because that's the most comfortable for me. And I'm going to put my hands sort of around the needle and use them almost like an embroidery hoop. And if you're starting anywhere other than at the edge of your work, you want to just take a few stitches in place and then you're ready to start moving your fabric around. And with a little bit of practice, you'll discover the best machine speed for you to use. I'm just doing a little simple pattern of swirls here.
when you do need to stop to reposition, which is going to happen, you want to be sure that you stop the machine before you take your hands off the sandwich. Then reposition your hands and sort of bring the machine back up to speed again before you start moving. It's a little bit like dancing with your sewing machine. Wow, I really like how you're putting some wave designs on the outside of that lace. Thanks, Jeannie. And actually, this reminds me to mention, when you are doing the free motion, or before you do the free motion work, you want to be really sure you fuse these edges down well, because I can tell you from bitter experience, sometimes if you haven't fused them, they'll catch on your foot. I have one more notion I want to show you really quickly. This is a really handy gripper that you can use with your free motion on your machine. Instead of just holding the fabric with your hands, you actually lay this on top and it works kind of like handles to help you get a grip on the situation. Let's take one more look at the three examples that we made out here. You know, Jeannie, this has been a lot of fun. We should do this again sometime. We should. Hey, next time we could start with photos. Sounds like a good idea. Awesome.